for whatever reason, but through many proofs. Can you imagine it, it, Thomas Jefferson, right? He's sitting down, uh, end of June 1776. He's sitting there with Ben. He's sitting there with John Adams. And he says, hey, old Ben, you think anything old George has done wrong in the last couple years? Man, why don't you hop on your iPad and research that, see if you can find out anything he's done wrong. They've been keeping a list. They've been building the record. They had sent petitions repeatedly. They had sent delegations repeatedly. And by 1776, the record, that long train of abuses, had become undeniable in terms of whether or not they were ever going to act in good faith. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. How do we start? How do we do that? We can be that guy, but I think much better for Utah. Do you realize we're the most charitable people in the United States of America by more than double the national average? We know hard work in Utah. We know sacrifice in Utah. We know kindness in Utah. Here's my challenge to you. In addition to your homework, Michelle, do you have those papers? Yes. In addition to your, to your homework to, uh, to go watch Man for All Seasons, 1966, Academy Award winner, best pitcher, I would ask you to know where's the line. If they can deal with the brownies in Tooele, what can't they do? We have to know where's the line. Your second assignment is to share multi-level liberty, molest your friends and family, neighbors. We have to share this with other people. I would invite you, the papers are passing out. I would invite you to write a date. Write a date by when you are going to have enough confidence that you know where the line is. It comes from right here. It comes from the Federalist Papers. It comes from many, many other good books. If you need a list, I'll be happy to help, but I know you've got plenty of people to help you with that. Write a date and write what you're going to do to know where the line is personally. How about ten people that you can share and help them understand where the line is? Just ten, right? Ten becomes a hundred, a hundred becomes a thousand. Now this one over here, you all know who your representatives are, right? Now I'll tell you, you've got an excellent one right here. I, I draw so much strength from him because John's a guy who's not afraid to stand up and say, I don't care what you think, this is what's right. You've got a good one right here. Do you know the others? And have you asked them, where's the line? Do you know where the line is? Are you still... Are you still dwelling under that misapprehension that checks and balances means only what you learned in eighth grade, executive, legislative, judicial, or do you understand why you take that oath under Article 6? Why you are the sure guardian of my liberty? Why you are supposed to jealously and closely watch the operations of this government and be able to resist every assumption of power better than any power on earth can do? Mr. Representative, where's the line? If they can do that to Mrs. Ford and Tooele, what can't they do? Fourth one, um, there are so many people. Rod Mann, I was emailing him at 3 o'clock in the morning one night trying to lay out this little book, and he was awake. <laughs> and he was sending it back. Michelle Scharf has been all over the state with me. Brent Maxwell, up all night. We're, 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 we're meeting, we're giving our time and doing these things. I'm printing these out of my pocket right now. Um, if you can help, if you can become invested in where's the line in any way, in time, in talent, in resources. I, I feel no shame in begging for your help in that. Right now, that, those aren't the official. This is still the last, the last draft. The, the actual published version should be out very shortly. So, right now, whatever, whatever, you feel, what, what, whatever you feel like contributing. Whatever you feel like contributing. I have a few of them. There will be more later. Um, there's more coming. But whatever you can do, th th this is time. It is time for us to secure the blessings of liberty to our posterity. Those, cons those curves are, are, are unfathomable. But by the same token, I believe that I believe we chose the time. I, I believe in a pre-life. I believe in a spirit life before we came here. I believe we had the opportunity to say, wow, is it going to be tough? Is it going to be hard down there? Send me then. Send me down then. I want to go then. I believe that's what we signed up for. And I believe as much as the great spirits that founded these freedoms for us, 
we have the opportunity to write the moment of this history for us and for our children. Let me leave you with these words. Ronald Reagan, actually before that, um, in doing that, there will be opposition. I don't see... I don't see personally, but it, it will happen. There will be opposition. But I don't see how you can oppose a simple question. Where's the line? What we're talking about is a national dialogue to ask that question. Where's the line? If they can do that, what can't they do? In doing that, Galatians 5.1, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made you free, and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. They pledged their lives, their fortune, their sacred honor because they knew that was not the end. And if they acquitted themselves in this life, there was a greater reward. They knew that by stating that we were endowed by our Creator with unalienable rights, it wasn't just about the management of the creature in this life. There was more accountability for how I treat my neighbor in another life. You can't have enough police to make people be good if you don't have that fundamental belief. We've exported our Constitution around the world. We've exported the letter of the law around the world, but they've not adopted the spirit of the law. It's that spirit by which we will prevail. If we make mistakes and people want to deride us for our mistakes, we're free from that as well. Through the liberator who's given us that liberty. Let me leave you with these words. Ronald Reagan made this statement... In 1987, I believe it, uh, 1985 actually, I believe it's more true for our day than in his. He said, this is a wonderful time to be alive. We're lucky not to live in pale and timid times. We have been blessed with the opportunity to stand for something. For liberty and freedom and fairness, and these are things worth fighting for. Worth devoting our lives to. So let us go forth with good cheer and stout hearts. Happy warriors out to seize back a country and a world to freedom. I believe Utah can be the model of what it means to be self-reliant and free to the United States of America. Thank you so much for letting me come and be with you tonight.